for tonight, I guess. Uh, obviously a very disappointing outcome for our team. Um, you know, the story of the game, of course, was their pitcher. We just uh, couldn't solve him. You know, we thought we had a, a good game plan for him. You know, we worked for a couple of days on uh, the type of pitcher he was. Uh, you know, as soon as we knew who we were playing on on Monday, you know, we watched a lot of film on him, and you know, he he's just was such a unique style of pitching. We haven't faced a guy like that all year. You 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 wonder how he's been so successful because he obviously doesn't have overpowering stuff. I think he topped out at like 85 miles an hour. His curveball was really really slow, and. Uh, you know, you try to school your your team, your hitters on what you're going to face, but until they get in the batter's box, it's really difficult to 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 mimic what you're going to face. And we tried to, and we the kids worked real hard all week trying to prepare for this this kid. But he's done this to everybody he's pitched against all year. He was the conference pitcher of the year, and he pitched a no hitter earlier this year. He's shut out teams, and. Uh, we just didn't get a lot of good swings against him. You know, we had the one great chance early in the game when Dylan let off with the triple. And, you know, Gavin hit the ball pretty hard, but right at the third base with nobody out. So Dylan had to, you know, hold his hold his base there, which was smart base running. And then, we, you know, we had a strikeout and, and um, you know, didn't advance him there. And then we had a walk. And even when we had something good happen to us, a hit batter, it actually hurt us because Dylan couldn't score on the ball that went to the backstop. And then, of course, uh, Giovanni crushed that ball to deep center field. And their kid made a nice running catch up against the wall. So, you know, we, we you know, we have many chances, but when we did, we just couldn't capitalize. And, uh, and that was the story of the game. You know, Landon pitched his heart out. They were they were very scrappy offensively, just like I thought they'd be. They were very difficult to strike out, and uh, they put some balls in play when they needed to, and they scratched a couple runs across. And that you know when you don't score any runs, you just can't win. So that was really the story of the game. Very frustrating for us, but you tip your hat to their kid. You know he's a kid that makes the most of his ability, and you know that was the story of the game. All right, we're opening it up for questions. Media, if you want to use the raise hand function um, to get in line to ask a question, I will call on you, unmute your line, ask your question, and then remute your line. We will start with Wilson Alexander. Paul, you had said with Landon that y'all's approach was going to be to try to pitch to contact. Is that what you ended up doing? And did it change at any point, or is that the way he was pitching throughout this game? Well, I think you can ask him, you know, when he comes up here, but you know, I thought I thought Landon pitched his heart out like he always does. You know, he only struck out I think three batters, so it was indicative of of them. You know, putting the bat on the ball, and uh, you know, I, I mean, I thought he pitched well. Um, you know, the, the you know they they they're line drive type hitting team. You know, they hit the ball to the opposite field really well. You know, I played the infield in after that leadoff triple because I just thought runs were going to be hard to get. And their kid Morrison, I think, was went to the opposite field. And, and you know, we, we left big holes because he had the infield in. The run would have scored if we had the runner at the we had the infield back anyway, but it ended up being a base hit. Um, you know, again, you, you got to credit their kids. They, they, they had a really scrappy team, veteran team. They were well coached and uh, you know, they, they were tough outs. Next question, Glenn West. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, you guys obviously wanted to use a whole bunch of left-handed hitters today to just try to get something going. I mean, just um, talk about the strategy, I guess, of using all the left-handers and just kind of what, what do you think, I guess, went wrong with the offense today? Do you think it was just more of a, a patience thing or just guys not getting good swings on that? You know, I, uh, first of all, I thought, you know, Trey had one really good at bat there where he hit the ball in the six hole. Their shortstop made an, a nice stop, but weren't, wasn't able to throw him out. And I thought Giovanni crushed that one ball with the bases loaded. Um, you know, Will got hit by a pitch one time. Uh, you know, the strikeout by um, by Mitch, you know, was a, was a 
tough at bat for us there. You know, I thought he'd he put that ball in play there and get us a run. It, it didn't happen for us. Um, you know, the, the the lefties didn't hit him much better than our righties did, but it's just, it's hard to describe. You know, I think you can ask Dylan when he gets up here, you know, it's just, he was such a unique kind of guy. You know, he's all arms and legs. He didn't throw hard, he, you know, but he had a tight spinning curveball and it was just, he, this guy relied on deception a lot and, <sighs> You know, like I said, he, if, if this was, you know, one time he did it all year, you'd think it was a fluke, but he's done this every game he's pitched this year. <laughs> he pitched a no-hitter, a complete game no-hitter earlier this year against a really good Pepperdine team, and he sh he's pitched shutouts all year. He, I mean, you get you got you to give the kid a lot of credit. You know, I admire the kid. He's not a, he's not a kid that's got a great arm and big pro prospect, but – you know, he, he's found a way to, to get the job done. And, you know, in, until you're standing in that batter's box trying to hit him, it's it's just hard, kind of hard to describe. It's not a traditional, you know, hard-throwing guy with really good stuff, but the kid make you know, gets the most out of his ability, and he, he found a way to get the job done against us. It's very frustrating, but I think you have to give him a lot of credit. Uh, let's go back to Wilson Alexander. Paul, you obviously had a, a long meeting out in the outfield after this. And what did you want to just tell your team with them now facing elimination tomorrow? Well, you know, you go into the weekend, Wilson, with the idea of how important it is to win the first game. And we didn't win the first game. And so it, one of the things about not winning the first game is a quick turnaround, especially when you play the night game, you know, the first day. And now all of a sudden we got to play at one o'clock tomorrow. So it's a, we got a, you know, COVID test at 8 a.m. Uh, we got BP on the field at 10 or so, and then a one o'clock start. And then Central Connecticut State has a really good ball club. I think they had 16 or 17 hits today against uh, Oregon. Oregon was holding on for dear life there at the end. So we, we got a tough task tomorrow. And, it, you know, we can't sit around and feel sorry for ourselves. This game's over. We don't want to go home 0-2. So we got we got to get ourselves ready mentally, physically, and, and ready to go tomorrow. And I was trying to explain to him that, you know, you just can't sit around and, and mope about this. It's over with, and we got to turn the page and just take it one game at a time. And you start thinking about winning the tournament and how many games we have to win, it becomes a very daunting task. So let's not worry about that. Let's just take it one day at a time. Let's win tomorrow and then regroup again after the game. And then we'll worry about the next day. And I tried to explain that to a bunch of young kids that are really disappointed right now that they didn't win the opening game. All right, any other questions for coach? All right, thanks coach, appreciate your time.